Hello, uh, Rocky is again. Following the last two weeks, I share about some of the Wi-Fi technology and the concept with my partners and customers. Some of my friends, uh, they call me uh, Rocky. Why uh, HVC propose a lot about the tri radio Wi-Fi access point? What is the reason behind? Uh, today, I would like to share more about the technology and the concept behind why we have to use what we call the tri radio access point, tree radio. Before I talk about the tri radio access point, I would like to share two of the fundamental concepts first. First of all, it's about the interference. Last time, I do talk about uh, the channel bandwidth in 5 gigahertz and 2.4. Last time, when I talk about 2.4, you know already, starting from around 2.4 gigahertz, to 2.5 gigahertz and uh, we can have around 420 megahertz channel bandwidth and in 5 gigahertz radio normally uh, most of the country will support okay this band and this band we will support 280 megahertz channel or one single 160 megahertz channel when we talk about channel bandwidth you have the concept first about the channel bandwidth in terms of the megahertz. This is equal to the bandwidth or the speed that we always talk about, the Wi-Fi speed. The bigger the bandwidth, the bigger the channel bandwidth, the bigger the speed. So this is a normal concept okay, that we have in Wi-Fi already. Another one is biggest channel, of course, biggest bandwidth. But at the same time, this will generate more interference. Imagine 160 megahertz channel, you run on this channel. If some other Wi-Fi access point or users surrounding you, they are using another 20 megahertz or 40 megahertz, sit inside this 160. That means the interference chance will be very high. Once interference happens, right, the user will always complain about the connection is very unstable and the speed will be very slow. So this is always happen in uh, a Wi-Fi AP config a very bigger uh, channel. So normally, when we config the access point, in 5 gigahertz, we use maximum 40 megahertz uh, channel in general, and in 2.4, we will use a 20 megahertz channel only. So this is what we are configuring in the access point. So if your AP got two radio, one radio 2.4, then you will config 20 megahertz channel bandwidth to generate the bandwidth. And for the 5 gigahertz, you will only use like a 40 megahertz channel bandwidth to generate the bandwidth. That bandwidth will not be the one that you read in the data sheet that last time I talked about. Oh, very, very fast speed. Because uh, in practical, in real world, it's very difficult to achieve. When we talk about Wi Fi bandwidth, okay, or the speed, you know already this is uh, under each standard, like 11A. And you can see the bandwidth maximum is 54 megabit per second. In 11 BG is running on 2.4. So the maximum bandwidth is 11 uh, megabit per second and 54 megabit, uh, megabit per second. And 11N is the standard for both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. And the maximum bandwidth, okay, we talked already under 40 megahertz channel, right? Is 150 megabit per second under the single user mind mode, one, uh, one mind mode. And 11AC, so here I don't talk about 11AX. Later, I will share with you more. So when we have this chart, then I have a question to you. When there is an 11A device, 11N device, and 11AC device running on different speed, and they connect to the same Wi-Fi AP, what happened? So under the 11AC, you see already, I can achieve the speed 200 megabit per second. And 11N, 150 uh, megabit per second. And 11A, 54 megabit per second. When all these kind of uh, devices supporting different standards connect to the same Wi-Fi AP, what happened? Frank, frankly speaking, everybody know already. Wi-Fi, we have what we call the backward compatibility. That means uh, we can work backward. It means the AP will change the working mode so that I can allow all different kinds of devices connect at the same time. And that means 
the AP will adopt the lower speed devices connect okay to that Wi-Fi AP. Of course, uh, the high speed users actually I am able to connect higher speed. I'm being affected because uh, there is an other no speed device connect. So this is the major reason, okay, that we consider a tri radio access point. A tri radio access point. What does it mean? Is okay. Normally we come with one two point four gigahertz radio, and another two five gigahertz radio. So normally under five gigahertz, I talked already. If you have eleven A, eleven N, or even eleven AC device connect, the lower speed device will affect okay the high speed users' uh, experience in getting a higher speed. If we can dedicate one of the five gigahertz radio, high performance service, and guarantee all the eleven AC wave two devices connect at high speed, then we just let another five gig, uh, five gig radio to serve okay for the rest of the user, and we can uh, separate what we call the low speed, low performance, or the basic surface user with what we call the high performance, high surface user. And also we can avoid okay the frequency okay interference because uh, for this one we can running on one 40 megahertz channel and the other one running on another 40 megahertz channel and we also encourage what we call the channel uh, bandwidth reuse so this is the exactly the concept why we are proposing the tri radio access point and we can solve some kind of a high density environment say or uh, in the lecture room in the UN hall, when there are a lot of the users coming together, they bring all kinds of devices with new technology, old technology. You cannot change the user device. What you can do is okay, build up a more advanced Wi-Fi infrastructure to cater for different kinds of devices connect together. So this is what the value of the tri radio access point. So thank you for listening today, and uh, this is the sharing this week. Next week, I may have another interesting topic to share. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.